This nugget is focused on the four Scrum meetings that should take place in every Scrum project. The most commonly understood or the most commonly discussed Scrum meeting is the daily Scrum. This is the 15 minute stand up quick status review of how well the team is doing on the sprint. Prior to the initiation of a sprint, there is a sprint planning meeting where you select the stories to be completed in the sprint, in the sprint and you secure commitment that the team believes they can accomplish and complete all of those stories within the sprint. At the end of each sprint, we do a sprint review where we do a demo of the results and we secure acceptance that the stories are done. And finally, I want to say most importantly is the sprint retrospective. It is the least con time consuming of all of the meetings, but the sprint respective is where we identify lessons learned. and we make process improvements. So let's dive in and have a little look at what happens in the daily scrum. The daily scrum I would suggest is the most commonly discussed, most commonly known meeting that we have within the scrum. And this is our 15 minute daily stand up. This is where all team members get together to discuss the sprint. The daily scrum is mandatory from two viewpoints. Mandatory in that we must do it. If there is one fundamental cornerstone of being scrum or following a scrum process is ensuring that the daily scrum happens every day on our or in our sprint. And it is also mandatory in that everyone on the team and that includes the scrum master, the product owner, and the team members themselves all must attend there are no excuses for not attending the daily scrum. Now, obviously, if a person is on vacation and not working that day, or if the person is sick, then they are excused from the daily scrum. But there are no excuses that says, oh, I'm really, really busy on this particular module, or I'm, I'm focused on this user story, or I'm in the middle of testing. I don't want to take the time away from testing to participate in today's scrum. I'll fill you in tomorrow. None of those excuses are acceptable. The daily scrum is a mandatory part of being a scrum project and attendance at the daily scrum is mandatory. It's critical that everyone attends so that we get a full, complete picture of how well we're doing on the scrum or in the sprint. The suggestion is scrum should be stand up and should take no more than 15 minutes. I'm not as hung up on making my daily scrum stand up. The reason for the stand up is if you're standing up, you're uncomfortable, you're fidgeting, you're trying to do everything you can to get the meeting over because you're tired of standing and you would like to go back to your workspace and sit and relax. So by making it stand up, i.e. uncomfortable, people focus on keeping it on time, saying the bare minimum to achieve the objectives of the daily scrum and moving on. Whether you do it as a stand up, whether you do it as a sit down, to me that's not a critical element of being a scrum engagement or not, but we want to keep people focused on the timeline and achieving the objectives. And we'll discuss what the objectives are in just a moment. The last statement I will make about the daily scrum is we want 
to strive for consistency. If we're going to expect, and I would even say demand, every Scrum team member participates in every daily Scrum, we need to have consistency predictability. It should always take place at the same time. And it should always take place at the same place. There's none, oh, the product owner is going to be upstairs today, so we'll have it in the upstairs boardroom. Oh, the product owner is now going to be down in our workspace today, so we'll have it in our workspace. Pick a consistent time and place that works for everyone, or at least is the least inconvenient for everyone, and stick to that. If there's one thing we want to have in place is a process, a system that's going to ensure people participate in, people appreciate, and people value the daily Scrum, and we want to make it easy for them. And to keep the Scrum on topic, to keep us down to our 15 minute maximum, we want to limit dialogue. We have three things and three things only that we want to discuss in the Scrum, and we want each team member to tell us, what did they do yesterday? I worked on story number 15, and I was able to complete the development. What are you going to do today? I'm planning to do the testing on user story 15 for the first three hours, and then I will go to the storyboard, and I will pick the next story that's scheduled for completion in this sprint. And we want each team member to tell us any problems and issues. And that's it. Status slash facts. As soon as we get into a discussion, team member number one said what happened yesterday. Team number two says, can you give me a little more detail on that? I'd like to better understand. Do the timeout sign saying that's not a daily scrum topic. If you two would like to discuss what's going on in user story 15, by all means, commit to each other to meet after the daily scrum and have that discussion. The daily scrum needs to be focused on status slash facts. What happened yesterday? Bullet, 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 no chit chat. What are you going to do tomorrow? Bullet, 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 no chit chat. What are the problems and issues? Hopefully everybody's going to say, I have no problems and issues. Things are going well. But as soon as we identify problems and issues, the Scrum Masters ears should pick up and say, oh, there's a roadblock. There's an impediment. There's something I need to do as Scrum Master to eliminate those roadblocks to ensure the team is moving forward. And again, I'm going to stress status and facts, no discussions. Really, as soon as two team members begin a dialogue, it's not relevant for the daily scrum. Ask them to take it offline. And if you very, very strenuously apply those rules, you're going to get through your 15 minutes. Remember, we only have five to seven team members in our scrum team. If there are seven people, we're going to get this done in 15 minutes. That's two minutes per person. They really don't have any more time to say, I worked on story 15 analysis, I worked on story 16 design, I worked on story 17 development. Today I'm going to work on the design, the development of these three stories, and their two minutes is really up. Why the daily scrum is so mandatory, why I want to enforce that we absolutely have to have the daily scrum, this is a self-managing, self-organizing team. If the entire team doesn't know what the status and facts of what the work each team member is working on, then they can't be self-managing and self-organizing. The daily scrum is where the team becomes self-organizing. Adhere to it ensure the principles are absolutely followed and you will be shocked at how powerful these 15 minutes are and your entire team will get 
committed to the daily scrums that you don't have to worry about making it mandatory because everybody's going to see the value and everybody's going to focus on the get in, present the facts, and get out and get on with the job. In terms of the next major scrum meeting is the planning meeting. And there are actually three planning meetings necessary for scrum. True scrum planning meetings is discussing only the last one here is the sprint planning meeting. The sprint planning meeting is where we select and commit to the stories for each sprint. And in the pure definition of Scrum, the only Scrum planning meeting is the sprint planning meeting. But before we can get to a sprint planning meeting, we need to have a product planning meeting and we need to have a release planning meeting. But these, as I say, are really outside of Scrum as pure the pure textbook definition but I am including them in this series because we can't get to sprint planning until we have the product planning. This is where the business owner and the product owner put together the product vision. This is what it is we're hoping to accomplish at the end of this entire scrum process. Once the business owner and the product owner agree on the vision, which is long before the team has been engaged, long before the scrum master has been identified, the business owner and the product owner develop the product vision. We then kick off the sprint process. So sprint starts here, but outside of the sprint team, there's also a release planning, which was primarily the product owner segments the overall product vision into release one, release two, release three, through release X. And this is where the product owner says, these are going to be the major milestones for this project. This is where I would typically result in an implementation and turning value over to the business. And then within each of the releases, we would get in and do the detailed sprint planning. And the product planning, as I said, is outside Scrum as a defined process, but critical to the overall execution of Scrum, which again is why I've included in this Nugget series. The business owner and the product owner are the key participants in the product planning meetings and the result of the product planning meeting is the product vision. Here is what it is we want to accomplish. It should be short. It should be distinct. It should be clear. And it should be understandable. and it should be visible throughout the project. As the team is making decisions, as the team is trying to better understand, I have the option of, of satisfying this user story in three ways. Which one of these options better supports the product vision? The entire team needs to be aware of the product vision but the ownership of the product vision is absolutely with the product owner. While the product owner and the business owner are developing the product vision, they typically will lay out the product roadmap and the product roadmap is going to be the input to the release plan. So the roadmap is going to say, well, customer maintenance is number one. Whoops, I say one and I write two. Uh, product maintenance is priority number two. Uh, 
shipping details is priority number three and so on this is where the business owner and the product owner begin to set the overall priorities and focus for the future releases in the future sprints again purely the responsibility of the product owner and the business owner and is typically done well in advance of the scrum master and the team being even identified. This is the preparatory work leading into the Scrum work, which is why I say it's outside of Scrum, but critical to the success of our Scrum project. Release planning is that crossover from the product vision to the pure Scrum process. And if the team is known, the team would participate in the release plan, but often, the release plan is done purely by the product owner and other key organizational stakeholders. So as the product owner is taking that roadmap and trying to deliver the, develop the release strategy, there may be input from other project or other organizational stakeholders because there will be a requirement to negotiate the release vision. Our roadmap said customer maintenance is number one. But when we talk to the CIO, when we talk to the inventory management organization, when we talk to the financial control officers, when we talk to the audit department, we realize that, you know what? We are currently failing some financial audits, so therefore we need to revise our product roadmap and develop a release vision that better aligns with organizational priorities. Once the release vision is negotiated, we then have this fine balance between the business owner needs, the team's ability to deliver, and the organizational priorities. And as I said earlier, typically a release equates to an implementation. So we took the product vision. To repeat the diagram I had in the introduction, the product vision is this large blob that represents everything the business wants. We took the roadmap, we negotiated a release vision, we validated that the team can deliver all of the functionality that we wanted. We can validate that we're consistent with organizational priorities. And we say, this is release number one, this is release number two, this is release number three, and so on. And typically, a release, as we know, is gonna be composed of a number of sprints, which we'll talk about in just a moment in the release, at the sprint planning meeting. But we will combine all of the sprints, so there may be eight sprints combined into a release, which is typically at the point in time when we're gonna take all of those sprints, all of the working code produced from all of those sprints and combine them and take them out of our development environment and put them into the operational production environment for the organization. Typically a release equals an implementation, but there are no hard and fast rules. The business may do multiple implementations within a release if there is business justification and value for it, or the releases may be still too granular. They make business sense. They may, may accumulate and combine like things into a release, but there may be insufficient business justification to truly go through the effort for a release or an implementation with the release so multiple releases could be combined. Details that will be worked out inside each project, but typically a release equals an implementation. And the true scrum planning meeting is what I've been referring to as the sprint planning meeting it takes place one per sprint. How long is a sprint? A sprint is however long the Scrum project decides the sprint should be. Typically a sprint 
is somewhere between one to four weeks in duration. The scrum team will negotiate the length of a sprint with the product owner. So the product owner may desire to have very short sprints because with a very short sprint, the product owner has the maximum flexibility to adjust. The, the team may say, no, we've worked together before. We understand each methods. We get incredible flow happening. We would like to have a longer sprint of three weeks and maybe they negotiate down to a two week. So again, there's no hard and fast rule to how long a sprint is, but typically a scrum sprint is somewhere between one to four weeks. You determine the length and then you stick to it. And that's the other key to a sprint is if the team decides, and let's pick a number of two weeks, is the length of our sprint, we stick to two weeks. We don't say, oh, we want to do a very fast sprint, so we'll do a one-week sprint, and now we want to do a lot of functionality for the business, so we'll make a four-week sprint, and oh, let's go back to the average and do a two-week sprint. No. You determine the length for a sprint, you negotiate the length for the sprint with the business owner and then you stick to it until you have a totally valid reason of why a two-week sprint is not working. That would be identified as part of the sprint retrospective. You would do your process improvement and then you would stick to that length of a sprint until again you have a valid reason for changing it. But we don't just change the length of a sprint simply because, oh, we'd like to do a quick one because we want to get something done. Oh, we'd like to do a longer one because we want to add significant value. You pick a number and you stick to it. A sprint planning meeting for a four-week sprint should take no more than eight hours. So if you're doing two-week sprints, in theory, your sprint planning meeting, if you were to do the pure math, should take no more than four hours, proportionally. Um, you know, you may choose to spend five hours or six hours, but you certainly should never spend a full eight hours doing planning for a two-week sprint. And if it's a one-week sprint, obviously even a little shorter. And within our expectation that we're going to go with a two-week sprint, so we would typically set aside four hours to do our sprint planning meeting. And then we're going to take those four hours and equally distribute it into two parts. We're going to spend two hours doing story selection. We're going to go to the, the product backlog with the business owner and we're going to select the next highest priority stories. So we're going to select the next highest priority stories. And the business owner, the product owner rather, is fundamental to the story selection. The product owner is going to obviously pick the stories that provides the most significant business value to, to him or her, but the team will influence. Yes, product owner, we understand that story 15 has a high business value slash priority. However, the team will influence the product owner and say, however, if you remember when we were working on the story in the last sprint, we, we implemented a less optimal search. In order to get the story completed within the defined sprint, we discussed and agreed with you that we're going to implement a less opt optimal search process to allow the sprint to allow the story to get completed. 
we would like to influence your decision that story 15 although it has extremely high business value we would like to alternate or or replace your business story 15 with team story 33 which is improve the search i.e the team has the right to influence the selection of the stories to remove this term called technology debt and we'll talk more about technology debt later in the series but the sprint planning meeting is we select the next highest priority stories where the priority may be business priority or the priority may be project team priority to remove technology debt to improve process or simply to implement technology we also need to implement team story number 42 which is the implementation of a new build server. So we've discovered that our existing technology is inadequate, does not have enough disk or whatever. The team needs to take four hours to implement a new build server. The implementation of new technology into the project environment also becomes a story and is selected and prioritized as part of the sprint planning meeting. So we spend two hours doing story selection in hand with the product owner at that point in time we typically tell the product owner you may be now excused it's not mandatory that the product owner leaves but the next step of our sprint planning meeting is the plan confirmation so we have selected story 1 8 15 33 and 42 on first blush we think all of those will fit within our ability to deliver for a sprint in the second two hours with or without the product owner the team confirms yes story number one should take x effort to complete story number eight should take y effort story number 15 should take z effort combining all of the expected efforts for all of the stories yes we have confirmation we have commitment that we will be able to complete all of these stories and then the team presents their plan confirmation back to the to the product owner and the sprint planning part two meeting concludes so just to confirm the activities in the two parts of our sprint planning meeting part number one is story selection absolutely must be done with the product owner we review the backlog and we select the next most important stories where the next most important stories may be business stories or they may be team stories and the, the stories are selected based on priority consistency and importance where typically the team stories are selected because of the importance to the overall project success the business stories are selected on priority and sometimes we will do a little optimizing that says story number eight is a very high priority but story number 15 which is a low priority is so consistent with is so compatible with story number 15 that we will bring along other stories as part of story selection to try to come up with a, a comprehensive cohe cohesive strategy for the sprint with the story selection done as i said we we will optionally excuse the product owner and continue into part number two which is our plan confirmation most important aspect we're going to do with plan confirmation is determination of done how do we know when user story number 15 is done what is going to be the measure of success and we should not select any stories to include in our sprint where we can't determine done present it to the product owner and get acceptance of done so yes if you do exactly what you told me you're going to do I will call that story done the next part of plan confirmation is do we have enough detail 
is there enough knowledge known that if I take that user story and commit to having a 15 or 20 minute further discussion with the product owner, I should have all of the facts. So again, the key with a story is enough detail that a 15 minute meeting will complete it. If the detail is lacking and we think we're going to have to have a four hour meeting with the product owner to get enough detail to code, then there's not enough detail with that story and therefore it is not eligible for the sprint. The next step is how much effort is it going to take to do that. This is where we ensure we have the capacity to complete the user stories or better still to complete all of the selected user stories within our capacity for the sprint and obviously we're going to make trade-offs. Business selected story number 15 not enough detail, so we will remove it, we'll make trade-offs, and we'll bring in a lesser priority story. The estimating effort is the business wanted these six stories done. The, the capacity of the team is less than the estimated effort for all of the stories, so therefore, again, we will make trade-offs. And bottom line is the team will develop a strategy for making it happen. Story number one, Fred will do the analysis and Sally will do the development. Story number two, Betty will do the analysis with Fred doing a pair analysis, looking over the shoulder, etc., etc. But when the planning part two session is done, the team should have an absolute strategy for all of the work, all of the stories selected and included in the sprint and knowledge of exactly what they need to do in day one, day three, day six through to day 10 of our sprint. And then with our daily scrum, we can track our progress to that. At the end of the sprint, a formal sprint review meeting should be scheduled. The sprint review should happen basically immediately after the sprint is complete. We don't want to have a lot of prep work. The sprint review should be informal. There should be no prep work. There's no elaborate PowerPoint presentations put together. I like to describe my sprint review as a show and tell. We're going to demo all of the results from the sprint to the project owner. We're going to present that demo to get the project owner's acceptance of done. Story number 15, here was our definition of done. Story number 15, here's our proof of done. That's the inspection of the results. And the product owner says, yes, you're right. Let's move on and let's discuss what the next steps are. Where, what will be our strategy for the next sprint? Now, the sprint review should be short and distinct or succinct. For a four week sprint, the sprint review should take no more than four hours. For a two week sprint, Proportionally, we should spend no more than two hours doing the inspection, the acceptance of done, the next steps. As I say, the, the, the way we make sure that happens is it's informal, no prep, it's show and tell, but it's critical because we need to get that formal acceptance of done from the product owner that we can literally take that story off of the backlog and put it in the done pile and have total confidence that the story is done. And our final meeting of each sprint is the sprint retrospective. And I would suggest the sprint retrospective should take one day or take place one day after the sprint review. Just a little bit of breathing time. We complete the sprint review at noon. I would suggest we don't want to immediately go into the sprint retrospective because we're, we're still riding on the high of we presented all of our stories to the product owner. We got acceptance of done of all of those, those stories. So therefore we're on a high. Let's take an hour or two, let's take half a day to make sure that we're not riding that high of, of completion and move into our sprint retrospective so that we have the calm, quiet thought. A sprint retrospective is also a very short meeting, three to four hours for a four week sprint, one to two hours for a two week sprint. 
all team members should participate in the scrum or the sprint retrospective and it's a quick review did our processes did our tools is the team working do we need to make any adjustments identify the improvement areas and create the improvement plans fairly standard stuff the key to the sprint or scrum retrospective is make sure that it happens one of the beauties of scrum process is it's self-correcting, but it only can be self-correcting if we take the time to include the sprint retrospective and don't get caught up in the lull of, oh, we're doing two week sprints. Let's only do a sprint retrospective at the end of every second sprint or the every third sprint, because as soon as you start slipping your commitment to the retrospective, all of a sudden 16 sprints have come and gone and you have done no sprint retrospective and a significant amount of process improvement should have taken place has not. This concludes our nugget on scrum meetings. The most commonly known scrum meeting and the scrum meeting that takes place most often is the daily scrum. 15 minutes, quick, status, and commitment for the next 24 hours. Everyone attends, mandatory we have them, and it's where the team truly becomes self-managing. Prior to the starting of a sprint, we have a sprint planning meeting, which is actually two parts. We select the stories with the product owner, and then we secure commitment that we can do it, and then we develop the plan for the sprint. Leads us into our daily scrums. We do two weeks of daily scrums. We complete all of the work that we committed to, and we have a quick two-hour show and tell where we secure acceptance of done. Also at the end of every sprint, we do a, a sprint retrospective. Again, very short, two hour maximum for a two week sprint. And we look for process improvement. Very little ceremony in Scrum, but very critical ceremony that we adhere to the daily Scrum the purposes of each of the two parts to the planning meeting, the sprint review to gain acceptance of done, and the sprint retrospective to ensure we're doing process improvement. This concludes our nugget on Scrum meetings. I hope this module has been informative for you, and thank you very much for viewing.